So I want to talk to you about this. Creating employee benefit and incentive programs for businesses. This is something <clears throat> where this is something close to my heart here. Uh, and because I've been in the business world myself, uh, I've owned a recruiting company. I've had it since 2000, 2001, <laughs> since 2001. And I've helped tens of thousands of people get jobs. I've worked with a lot of human resources directors. I've worked with CFOs. Uh, I have worked in with everybody that has to do with the employment side of things. And that filters into what, what's happening on the employee side in businesses is a big deal to the business owner. They want their employees to be happy. They want them to feel like they're, they care for their employees. They want to feel like they value their employees. And so these businesses are always, always looking for ways that they can bring new benefits to their employees, okay? And if there's no cost to it, even better. They're, they're looking for cost-based services that can bring value to their employees and bring benefits to their employees. But now you, but when it's free or nearly free, uh, this is something that, uh, you know, that is very powerful in the business world. And so employees can save through our program and businesses or the cause for that business, whatever they happen to be passionate about, like a charity or something they give to a mission, they all have missions that are out there. And so now we have a way to hit twofold, right? We have a way to save their employees some money, make an impact on the environment, and then also hit the bottom line for those businesses or help their causes. And so this is a big deal. I'm not going to get into the um, the app because you guys just need to have that app. I'm just, let me go back to that. <laughs> if you don't have this app, <laughs> the Think Plus Connect mobile app, you are missing the boat, okay? You have to get that app. And when you get the app, just download it. It's the same login information that you have for your back office. Download it, put it on your phone, and then log in and go right to the bottom of the page on, on the screen. There's a little graduation cap there. Go get your diploma. It takes about 10 or 15 minutes to watch the five courses. They're videos, short videos, like two minutes each. Watch them and you'll be expert on how to use this without anybody else having to teach you. It's built right into the app after you download. You don't have to go anywhere else. So who's the target audience for you know businesses um, where you can create you know, employee incentive or employee benefit programs. Who's the target audience? Well, I would say that the target audience is really any business or organization that has employees. Um, you, and, and I always recommend going to your local chamber of commerce. You can stop in at their office. You can call them up. You can ask them for a directory. You can visit their website and see a directory on the website. I like to get all of them. I like to get the book. Like I like to get the Chamber of Commerce listing for all the towns that are in my area. And I like to drive to those towns. If they're local, just go to visit them. Shake hands with the person that runs the Chamber of Commerce. Let them know what you're doing. Maybe join the Chamber of Commerce with what you're doing. Uh, you know, it's not, sometimes it's not that expensive and it's a great way in, you know, attend their events. Go to those events. But definitely shake hands with the director, the president, you know, of this of the Chamber of Commerce, if they're there in the office or whoever's in charge. And if you don't shake hands with them this time, go back again, pick up another directory so you can share it with your team. Guys, this is how it works. OK, get in touch with those local businesses. I like to look for businesses that are 20 employees and up. It's kind of like the bread and butter because it's enough employees to really make a difference if, if every one of those employees signs up. But, and even bigger than that too, but it also could be, big for, uh, could be good for smaller businesses. So there is a sweet spot of, of a number of employees because the more employees, the better off, yes. But don't leave out the smaller ones, right? Because they'll lead you to the people that you're looking for. And a lot of times when you're working with smaller businesses, they'll actually look at this as a business opportunity. Uh, whereas with, when you, for themselves, or for their family members or for other people that they know because they're in a smaller business and they're more intimate within the community. So they're a little more in touch, right? Um, locally, 
But then if it's a bigger business, you know, sometimes they're not going to look at it as a, as a potential, you know, something for themselves, but they're always looking at the bigger picture with their employees. And then also don't leave out uh, faith groups and nonprofits and school systems and sports teams and you name it, it, businesses definitely, but anybody where there's human capital, right, where there's employees, where there are people where there are volunteers, those also have to count in here as well, because you can create incentive programs for those groups as well. All right. And so here's the thing about the process. First, you want to build your target list. Now, we already talked about that by, you know, going and getting those organizations, but starting local and thinking national, that last bullet point on there, when you're building your target list, start local then think about some of the bigger organizations that are out there, the bigger businesses that are out there. So start local, think national. That's how you should do it with everything that you do. And then invite them to take a look. Invite people after you make a list. You're going to contact people at the company. So who are you going to talk to at the company? The target list should include, and this is not the only people that you would that you would want to work with, but this is a kind of guideline for who you should be talking to. You know, you should be talking to someone who is connects with the employee somehow and is in a leadership position and for the with the employees. So this could be a human resources director. Sometimes that's a good thing. You might talk to a human resources director that is, you know, actively looking to shine at the company by doing good things and by proving to upper management that are above them that they're doing great things for the employees and bringing new innovative programs into the company, especially with inflation and all the things that are going on with finances and things like that. Costs for, uh, you know, a lot of companies are having to cut back now. And so if they can bring something in that really doesn't cost them uh, money, uh, real large amounts of money to implement, that's a, that's a powerful thing. You might be talking to a CFO, a chief financial officer at a company. You might be talking to the owner of the company. You might be talking to someone uh, in the facilities side of things, okay? The sustainability uh, directors, if it's a larger company, they may have sustainability company. And because we have clean energy programs, it, it, in, it, it gives an incentive or it interfaces, I should say, or is very attractive to people on the sustainability side because of what we do with clean energy and what we do with the environment with our partnership with One Tribe. So sometimes the sustainability person is going to be the one that's leading the charge at the company to move this program, the Think Energy program, this platform with Think Plus through their company and through uh, with their employees as well and, and through upper management. So those are just a few of the people. You know, if you're talking, obviously, if you're talking about a church, you're going to talk to the, the head pastor, the head of the church, whoever it would be, you know, the minister, whoever it would be. The priest, you're going to be talking to someone in leadership, okay, or whoever the community organizer is, right? That's another place to go as well um, when you're talking with faith groups. And with school systems, I mean, hey, ask the school, who heads up all the fundraising type of programs, you know, in the school? Like, who's the one in charge of community, community outreach at the school? Who is that? That's who you're looking for. Pu public relations, right? You're definitely going to be talking to a superintendent, you know, or something like that as well, or the principal of a school. You'll do, you you want to get to leadership. And then all it is, once you've identified who you're talking to, and these this is just an example of something to say. This is not the only thing to say. You want to tailor this to be you, okay? This is just a, a general guideline. We I want you to take this and just, you know, Add your own flair to it. But this is like the bare bones minimum that I would put in an email or if I was reaching out to someone face to face, if I was on the phone with them, whatever it is. But hey, I'd like to discuss a no cost state program with you that you may not be aware of. Sometimes I might say that you may or may not be aware of. It can benefit your employees for free, right? So the benefit to the employee, it doesn't cost the employee anything. And it can result in dollars to your bottom line at your company or to a cause that your company supports. See, companies love to hear that. They all have, you know, a public relations side of what they do. I don't care how small they are. They want to be perceived in the community as being 
uh, doing good in the community. They want to be, you know, do they want to be do gooders, right? They, they want to be the people that are doing good in the community. So that's where you go with this. It's a benefit to the employee, a, something that adds to your bottom line. That may be re- very important to a company right now with the way the economy is and things like that, or to a cause that your company supports. So let's hop on a 10 minute Zoom call. And, you know, when can we do that? That's it. Let's hop on a 10 minute Zoom. When When is good for you? Like what I have Tuesday and Thursday at this time, whatever it is. But that's the bottom line, short, quick introduction to talk to someone at a company. Now, think about it. If you owned a company, maybe you do own a company. Okay. But when in my company, when people would call me up and they'd say, who's the, who's the owner of the company? And I would say, well, then they eventually get to me. If somebody ever came to me and said this to me, I would be like, that's an eye opener a state program that I may or may not be aware of. My employees benefit for free. That's good. Can result in uh, money to my bottom line, or I can, it can go toward a cause that my company supports. You, you have just hit every single good. That's a good conversation. The only thing they want to know is, well, what is it? And look, don't get into that until you're on a 10 minute Zoom. Use our regular training that we have. We do this all the time. Listen, I don't have that kind of time right now. It would take me like 45 minutes to explain it over the phone. Or, uh, you know, or, you know, if we're sitting here face to face or whatever, uh, there's no way to handle it via email. We need to hop on a 10 minute Zoom. That's it. Uh, just keep it really simple. I don't have the, that kind of time right now. It would be like giving a haircut over the phone. It's not going to work. Whatever you have to do to get to the presentation, don't collapse the invitation into the presentation, just like we teach in our regular trainings. And this goes for anything that you do. Okay, get them to take a look. If they need to know more about it, say, hey, look, we're helping, we're helping your employees to save money and or get free energy and your company will benefit bottom line from it, or the money can go to a cause. There's money here as well. (laughs) All right, so maybe that's what you say. And then go to the three questions if that's not, you know, if that doesn't work. But I would not present over the phone. Do not do that. Do not present over the phone, okay? Either face-to-face or on Zoom. The process, when you show them the program and how much they can save or earn, how much they can save, how much they can earn, how much they can give, and then also the impact that they can make. So we're going to show them all of those things. This is what your people, your employees, if you care about, can save. This is what you can earn or give to an organization. And this is the impact that you're going to make. You guys, sometimes I just recently spoke with a, somebody who was a sustainability director and the CFO and the human resources person. It turned out at the company, all three of them were interested in this, in this uh, program. And all three of them came together on one Zoom. And on that Zoom, we talked about all of these things. And let me tell you what, it was like the human resources person was like, wow, this is going to be great for our employees. We can make this a benefit. We can actually put Think Energy's program for community solar and for retail electricity supply, or but really community solar was the one they were after. We could, because it's a guaranteed savings, no risk. I'm like, are you kidding me? So the human resources director is like, we could actually put that into our our guide for new employees with a with a QR code that they can just scan it. Like we could make it part of their employment package, like they could come in and actually sign up right here while they're going through orientation if they'd like or take the packet home and sign up when they get home because we can interface that and bring it in and have it be part of our cause. And then the CFO at the company was like, same company was like, yeah, I really like this program too. What I'd like to do is I'd like to have half of the money go to our cause, our mission, our charity that we give to, that our employees, we educate them about it. We want them to donate to it. We make donations. We'll match. We do matching donations sometimes throughout the year. Like, hey, if you donate to the cause, we'll do a match. And we have incentive. We have programs programs that we do to run us like the guys like yeah we'd love to do that but then we'd also like to keep half of the earnings <laughs> and we'd like to put that into an employee outing so they wanted to pay for an outing for all of their employees with half of the proceeds you guys it's just amazing what you can do with this right so 
And then, and then, of course, the sustainability person, the facilities director and sustainability person. It was the same title with one person. That person was absolutely and totally engaged when we were talking about how clean energy works, how community solar is 100% clean and it's accessible to everyone. So it was all about accessibility and, uh, and, and being able to bring something clean to the environment. And then when we got to the part about 4 million, you know, 4 million trees protected now, which is in our presentation, it was like, are you kidding? You're, you're actually paying money. He, he actually knew who one tribe was. And he was like, it costs money for every, you know, for you to say that you're giving, you know, protecting 50 trees. I know what that costs for the company. There's a cost to do that. And he was very impressed with what our company did. And now we're moving on to the next phase. They're going to consider it and we're going to have a follow-up and all that. So we just took our time and showed the program. It only takes about 10 minutes to do. We're not going through a lengthy presentation. Invite a leader to help you. If that's what you want to do, definitely do it. But don't feel like you have to have somebody helping you. Sometimes, you know, some of the best presentations are people that are just getting started and it's just you and you locally in your community and you're, and it's just you talking to a local business, two local people, their minds coming together. There's no wrong way to show this to someone. So use our slides that we have that you can go through. And they're the same slides that we use when we're, you know, that we have that are available on our Google Drive that you use for you know, programs uh, for nonprofits and churches and faith groups and businesses. It's the same exact presentation. You don't have to get into lengthy, lengthy discussions. Recommend options that make sense to them. Like, hey, we can have this go to your bottom line or we can have this go to your cause. Or you can take some of it and make recommendations like I just told you about. You know, you can have some of this go to an employee picnic if you'd like, or maybe you want to create, we have another company that came aboard that they're using at all the funds that they get on a monthly basis uh, from bringing in customers onto our platform. You know, the company becomes an advisor just like anybody else. So they have access and all the, all the money that comes in, they're giving that money away. It, they, they have a, like, they're going to create a thermometer that kind of rises throughout the month. And at the end of the month, the employee of the month, instead of just getting a special parking space, which is what they've been doing, they're going to give them cash and the parking space. You guys, I don't know about you, but if I was an employee at that company and somebody all of a sudden, you know, after 10 years, we've been doing a parking space for being employee of the month. And now all of a sudden we're going to give you, you know, $2,000 or whatever. You see that thing rising. You realize how exciting that is like that. The first few days, maybe it's a hundred bucks, 200 bucks, 300 bucks. But by the time, you know, three weeks into the month, that thing starts to rise up and it's going to be like thousands of dollars, right? Potentially. You guys, that's exciting um, to, for that employee. And it, it creates, you know, the, the kind of enthusiasm that it kind of creates for that. I mean, it's kind of cool. So, yeah. And, and so I, when I was on the, on the call with that person, I said, you know, you should call you, whatever you give away that month, like, let's say it's like, you know, $500. I don't know what it is, whatever it is, but let's say it's $500. You should take in, on that parking space. You should put their name up there and be like, this is Joe Smith's parking space. This is the $500 parking space. You should put the, the money up there for what it was actually worth, you know, so it reminds everybody kind of a cool thing. They thought that was kind of a neat thing. Like I, this is what I like to do with um, businesses when I'm working with them. You know, what you don't want to do is say, listen, I will pay for you to become an advisor because you're not allowed to do that. That's against our policy. You're not allowed to do that. That's a violation of terms and policies. Okay. You're not allowed to like pay to coerce customers to, to sign up. You can't do that. It's against policy, but you can certainly say to the business, I will make a 50, as soon as you bring in your first customer, or maybe you're just so passionate about their, you know, about their company that you just say, Hey, look, I'll make a $59 donation to whatever cause it is. I can't, I can't give you the money. Okay, I'm not, I'm not allowed to pay for you to join, but I can certainly make a donation. I can make a donation for anything that I want. I can make it for more than $59, whatever you want to do. Or maybe you say to them, listen, after you bring your first couple customers in one or two, whatever, one or two customers or three, whatever you want to do, um, say, listen, just have your leadership sign up 
And as soon as a couple of people sign up that are, you know, part of your company right now, your upper leadership, your upper management, maybe you, right? Um, maybe the company can sign up as a customer if they have, if they, if they fit into the category of small business, uh, you know, can sign up potentially. Um, maybe they just sign up for electricity, but whatever it is, make a donation to their cause. You're allowed to do that. You are allowed to do that. And in their mind, the $59 they're spending to get in by you making a $59 donation because they like to do good and it's good pub, you know, good for PR, you making a donation on their behalf. That's how it works, you guys. So this is like one hand washes the other, right? It's exactly how this works. And so keep that in mind as you're working with people that you can help them and, and you know, you can help this move forward and make it a no brainer for them. Talk about the marketing center with Copilot and the digital marketing platform. You guys realize, and, and then ask for a decision, you know, ask them for a decision. That's the key, right? You realize that with this program that we have with Marketing Center, with all these flyers now appearing in there and other information appearing in there, and there'll be even more as we go, you know, working uh, in that platform and then keeping, uh, keeping an eye out because some of these businesses or organizations that you're going to work with to create employee benefit or employee incentive programs, some of them are going to be perfect for the co-pilot program when we enter the public beta, or they might actually be bringing in so many customers right now that corporate hears about that and just says, let's get them an 800 number right now. Forget about the, uh, you know, forget about waiting until the public beta. They're already after it and they're already already doing it, let's add fuel to the fire. So that could possibly happen as well. And then when the digital marketing comes out, that's just going to be even more that's available to them. So you guys, this is something that makes it so easy. I love telling these businesses about these three things and where we are, that it's a beta and it's moving forward, because then they understand that they could potentially get an 800 number, you know, if they wanted to, and actually not have to really educate uh, or do a lot of marketing uh, to their employee base to, to move this program through. Um, but they can just tell, drive people to an 800 number. You know, and here's the thing. Once you have the program up and running, you're gonna, you should offer to these businesses to do a presentation for their employees. Maybe you're local. You grab pizza. You order pizza and you bring it in and we're going to have a pizza, a lunch and learn. We're going to have a lunch and learn right in your employee break room you know, or wherever it is, or just hop, have them hop on a Zoom. You know, sometimes I like to do that. I like to, you know, sometimes I, I remember I did this one time, not too long ago. I did this. The employees, they all, they all uh, would come into the office and they would have, you know, their break or whatever. And they, they, the owner of the company said, let's just have a break time at 1130 from 1130 to 12. And then I, I was on Zoom with them because it just made sense. It was, it made sense for me not to be there face to face because they could all stay in their offices where they were working. It, they didn't have to gather all together, but they basically uh, could hop onto the Zoom with me. And what I did was I sent over like donuts, you know, over to, over to them uh, during that break. And you know what they did? They showed up, I, the donut showed up about a half an hour before and then everybody went and grabbed a donut, went back to their office and they were able to kind of listen and do, it didn't interrupt the day, but they all attended. It was kind of cool. So there's a lot of ways that you can do this, you guys. So it's very exciting. The marketing center is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and it's going to help us as we move forward. So uh, 